there we go. Hi, Dr. Fari. How are you? Uh, good to see you. How are you? Good. So good to have you. Thank you for being so prompt. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So I was just telling our friends here that we are going to be talking about all things breathing and sleeping in kids. We're really, um, we're really going to be de delving into that. And I think this is a really, really important topic. And so I think I'll start by introducing myself and then I will not, I know I will not do it you justice if I try to introduce you. So I'll have you do that. But for those who don't know me, hi, I'm Dr. Funke Apolabi Brown. I am the founder of Restful Sleep MB and the Restful Sleep Place, which is a pediatric sleep medicine practice. It's a pediatric and young adult sleep medicine practice that is opening in October. The wait list is ready. Go to the restfulsleepplace.com. But enough about me. <laughs> I'm just so thrilled to have my friend here. And so Dr. Fari, would you introduce yourself and what you do? Sure. Thanks for having me. That means I children that long. I uh, maybe buy it. You know, the long deserve a lot more credit. So I'm an advocate for um for everything long health, and that's why I'm excited to be here. I love it. I love it. You're sort of going in and out with your audio. I hope. Let's oh. see if, if you can make sure you're closer to the mic. Maybe. Okay. Perfect. Yes, yes, you are an advocate for every for long health, and I think that is just so important. And so maybe we could talk a little bit about how how do you become you? How do you become that um, pulmonologist? That's not just a pulmonologist, a pediatric pulmonologist. And I think you know, while I have a lot of people on here who are physicians, who are maybe sleep experts, who are professionals, not everybody that um, is on that follows restful sleep MD is in the medical field and so can you just tell us a little bit about what it takes to be you know where you are and maybe there's some aspiring <laughs> college student or you know high school uh, student that's on here too um what what do they need to do and how did you get to here so i'm excited to share um i think pediatric, yeah, always knew i love pediatric. i wanted to do that but so first after graduate school as you go through you get to decide where you Build, you want to be a physician, you get to decide what you employ, um, your skills and where you want to who you want to help. And so for me, I knew it was, and then and going through pediatrics, one of the things I realized was that breathing problems, respiratory symptoms was the commonest reason why I took into the emergency room and the outpatient and I realized the tool of health education was very powerful. This thing that cost a lot of money, cost a lot of stress, sadly a lot of deaths um, mm -hmm. as well um, could be solved if we better care we had available. So after pediatric residency and did a yeah, pulmonology um, fellowship, so a training, um, and we got, um, we might get there, we talk about many more complex diseases as well, but um, you know, there are many common things that form the core of what we do. So I think that's a sign. Yes, please come if you're interested <laughs> yes yes and i could just tell that passion just hearing you speak about it and so yes when we talk about pediatric pulmonary medicine which is also something that we share in common apart from being friends dr fari and i are both pediatric pulmonologists but on top of that i also have the sleep medicine expertise but with that a pediatric pulmonologist is not just an asthma doctor and i'm just gonna put that plug in because most times People just assume we take care of children with asthma. We take care of children with, you can just imagine anything from, from your, the tip of your nose all the way down. <laughs> we even take care of stuff that's not related to the lungs. We take care of, of reflux and things like that because it impacts the lungs. And we'll talk a little bit about what that relationship looks like as we go, um, as we talk about this. And the reason why I really wanted you to come on here is, Again, I've had a few people ask like, oh, I, you know, I wasn't sure my child's been coughing for a while and is coughing at night or, you know, we end up going to the emergency room at night, right? They have croup at night. They have a lot of wheezing at night. We end up needing the nebulizer at night, you know? And so can you tell us a little bit about how 
breathing or difficulties breathing can impact our sleep maybe we'll start with that and then we'll delve into what are just the different kind of conditions that you see sure we can do that i um first of all i think many of us don't know that even in the general population in children in adults that our the, the breathing pattern changes by time of day and so the way we um when we're tired and, and and also the hours of the day first of all the fact that we're up in the day second of all the circadian rhythm so our actual lung function due to a number of complex um interactions it changes by a little bit but in children particularly children it changes a lot more at night time second of all the fact that yeah many times people are recumbent at night so the tone in the back of the throat keeping the airway open is a little less meaning the the space is not if that's happening then um breathing difficulties will manifest more so that's the other thing and next up is the fact that um people take this for granted dust mites um and dust mite allergy it tends to be abundant on sheets and because of the skin cells and so just the fact that a lot of um, children are in bed um, with an abundant amount of exposure to dust mite also means something will irritate their air, their noses, and then the back of their throat, and then it could be the beginning. So those are some of the common factors that come together, right? And then sometimes in the winter, the house, the, the amount of humidity or lack thereof would also be a factor. Sometimes the environmental indoor pollution, right? If based on the things that the child is exposed to in the home, um, also over the hours of the night. So those are some of the factors that make um, breathing problems come together and sort of are exacerbated at night. Thank you. That was perfect. So I came up with the seven that you just rattled off. You know, you guys can see how brilliant this incredible woman is. Um, so the first is what you talked about the fact that you're laying down flat and if you want to even try that out if you lay down flat try to take a big breath it's gonna be more challenging so there's something we call our sort of our lung capacity so that decreases when you're going from upright where your you know your diaphragms are flat and they're pushing down all your belly contents and things like that so that's different from when you're laying down flat and there's a whole lot of Theology we could go into but we're not gonna go that nerdy today <laughs> the second is something that you said which is the fact that your um, the, there's a circadian pattern even to our breathing and so at the end of the day most times people tend to have a slightly lower sort of lung function at night time and so that they follow that same you remember we talk about the circadian rhythm and most times people think circadian rhythm and melatonin it turns out that circadian rhythm affects so many systems including our lungs this is so fascinating and then the third one is the tone right if you are laying if you are laying down flat your tone and you're sleeping right so your tone is lower and this is where people who may have asthma um, who may have things like sleep apnea may even have more problems right because you're sleeping your tone is worse and so if you have asthma on top of that it's going to cause a lot of difficulties and then some really important pieces you talked about as well the allergens right dust mite is abundant in our sheets on our pillows and so then you're really breathing it all in at night so that's going <laughs> to exacerbate things and then you know humidif the humidification so if you're not if you don't have good humidity in the room that's going to make your um sort of your air your airways just dry and so that's going to make things worse as well and dry air is a big trigger for asthma and then finally indoor pollution right you know if you think about it most times maybe the doors or the windows were open so you have pollutants in and that's going to become very irritating to the airway so this is so 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 good thank you for taking us through this now the next question i would say is what are just some conditions right so we talked about the fact that i know asthma is a big one right but what are some other conditions that a a pediatric pulmonologist treats and also what kind of other breathing conditions can parents see in their kids because sometimes all they say is he has troubles breathing and that is quite non-specific because there's so many things that can make you have troubles breathing so can you just walk us through sure. that? 
first of all maybe we should start from prematurity yeah right uh, so, uh, there's a whole category of, of diseases because the lungs um are very special they're one of the, the large um the largest organ to, um one of the largest organs um to, that develops really late in pregnancy so when children mm -hmm. are early one of the things that keeps them in the NICU uh, some for a long time uh, what we call chronic lung disease of premature so that's a big force right and uh, there's also apnea of prematurity but then when we go into later in early childhood there's several lung infections um that the severity of it may need a pediatric pulmonologist there's asthma infection, but there's also this, this um, um pathology or or the manifestations of um, systemic diseases in the lung an example is um, sickle cell disease you have autoimmune diseases right like lupus and so there's that category there's also people that have lung disease and some of these are genetic so right mm -hmm. so there's a genetic predisposition and it affects how the lungs develop so those are without getting into the rarer and rarer but those are some of the common group and then there's um, things that happen like trauma like foreign generation that, that we also mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that is so powerful now what would what are symptoms i mean of course you would have a you know if most pe people will see their children coughing and they would know okay i need to see my pediatrician and many times like you talked about a lot of times especially in younger children the main um issue is that they're they have cough and it might be related to a virus right a lot of colds and things like that we're exiting the covid pandemic right um but there's so many other viruses that can affect the lungs so that's usually one of the things and then sometimes people then talk about oh he's having back-to-back -back colds i'm not sure what's going on so maybe walk us through when would you start to be one concerned like okay this is not just like your bread and butter he has a runny nose he's in daycare has a cold this is more like something else might be going on maybe i should consider seeing a lung specialist so let me start by saying cough like i said it's a defense mechanism mm -hmm. even though we use it as a symptom but we our body actually the fact that we the ability to cough is something we should be grateful for because mm -hmm. it's our airway. In response to a lot of things within that don't belong, the mucus traps it and kills many. And then the cough is one of the ways we get rid of that extra excessive mucus. Or sometimes we protect it coming in like liquid. So a cough, uh, once um, an occasional cough itself is not a problem. But like you were mentioning, when we then have a virus, then because a lot more mucus and there's a lot of there's something going on actively then there's more mucus so there's a, um, a reason to cough more more mm -hmm. both times within seven to ten days most children and most people will clear the primary viral infection so that cough starts to go away but a cough many times when this beyond four weeks we start to sometimes that's going towards chronic what we call a chronic cough so that's one thing the other cat well the um besides timing cough tends to be nocturnal like we mentioned earlier where sometimes some children uh, or people do not have any cough during the day but then in that position they've gone to sleep so like all the things we said could affect it um that may be more concerning because an infection will cause cough throughout the day right so that, that's another thing about a cough and now um the associated symptoms so a cough that's associated with um, a, um shortness of breath that's not getting better weak that's not getting better chest pain that's not getting better you know again um what is happening together if you put that together in a context you might say after a few days if it's a virus it should get better a cough in a child who's um maybe was otherwise healthy no other symptoms but coughs um you know maybe a sudden onset of cough may also make us think, especially in toddlers, we may think is there a foreign body something happen. Um, so those are some things about cough. Now to let's leave cough alone and move to other things, right? Noisy breathing. That's another thing. And sometimes we call um this, you know, parents call it different names, but noisy breathing can also be problematic from tiny little baby, right, who 
because they are obligate nose breathers, right? If they, are, if they have a blocked nose, um, then it could get noisy. Sometimes they have um, the windpipe has less cartilage, so it's noisy. And many times that self resolves, but it can be concerning for parents. Um, interestingly, also the pattern of breathing. Um, but in many in baby, newborns, whoever has had a newborn will know that they have interesting ways of breathing. Um, but there's a few, so most of what people see tends to be a variation a newborn pattern of breathing. There can be things that happen that they see, like pauses that are too long. Mm -hmm. um, we call that, I don't know if that's a big but I, I don't think uh, that then as things that are concerning. Um, wheezing um, comes as a noise that comes from the chest, uh, musical, it can, it can be from asthma, but it can be from many other things uh, because of the pipes in the lungs. Well, I think of them like pipes when they get blocked, you get that musical sound. And so that's, lastly, I'll say, excess, shortness of breath or exercise intolerance. So uh, most of us, when we are, or when we have shortness of breath from exercise, it may just be that we're deconditioned to exercise more. I can put my hand for that, right? But um, it's also um, possible that, you know, who was previously fit and there's um, a sudden or worsening, right? Maybe cough or shortness of breath um, or wheezing after maybe um, uh, uh, walking a short distance. So those... Um, new amount of um, shortness of breath or exercise intolerance could also be that something is happening with the lungs because they are responsible for helping us, you know, pull in more air when we go to exercise. So if the lungs are having trouble with that, one of the things that would happen is, you know, our body will, will alert us that we can't pull enough oxygen to do this particular activity. Mm. That, that's, that's awesome. So we've talked about quite a few things. So it's not just coughing, um, but it could be noisy breathing. If your child is making funny noises, <laughs> you may, it's, if, if it's not, if it's outside of that newborn phase, and I think one of the things you mentioned too is, you know, the apnea. So snoring is a sound that a lot of, um, you know, the patients I see, they come to see me because of snoring. But then when in some situations when we've, you know, had a, had a, um, either we've, had an audio recording so some parents will be so freaked out they, they record it and that's something that i would encourage you to do as a parent if you're like my child is making this kind of funny sounds when they're sleeping you can record it and take it to your pediatrician so they can listen and they can let you know because many times what i'm hearing is not necessarily that snoring which may be a sign of sleep apnea but not all the time it could be wheezing like you talked about it could be just noisy breathing so those are sounds um that then a pulmonologist will be able to help you kind of determine what is what and if you need more testing i mean of course you know your pediatrician will also be able to guide you to say oh no this is completely normal sounds but especially if you're concerned if you're worried that something's going on then that might be a time that you know you might want to just have it checked out and then another Another one that I wanted to just, you know, put a big, big exclamation point on is if you have a child who <clears throat> has sudden onset shortness of breath, sort of out of the blue, and is maybe a toddler, and maybe you, you, you know, you heard them choking, and then now they're breathing, they're breathing heavy or they're wheezing. Is that foreign body? And that's something that a pulmonologist is always nervous about but you know we could help it's it's just a, a nuisance because we have to go in to remove the foreign body we have to actually go into their lungs to take out whatever is blocking their airway and especially caution to parents or toddlers around things that they may be putting in their mouths exploring you know they're in that exploratory phase but they can easily choke on those things so I, peanuts I don't, <laughs> <I don't not. laughs> can I uh, like absolutely maybe when they're in kindergarten with this yes. <laughs> yes you sound like you've had you you've had a couple of of experiences yes where we've had to go in because your child needs in that situation your child needs a test called a bronchoscopy which you know you need to put them under and things like that and and that's i mean if we need to do it we do but it's always better to avoid it as much as possible so if you're taking anything away it's really watching your children and avoiding them from putting you know legos um buttons batteries um you know different types of knots you name it even if you feel like the knot is small 
they can still aspirate them and it can they just and their airways are so tiny that it just you just need that little piece edged into the airway to cause difficulties with breathing okay. so that's definitely something we want to pay attention to yeah and yeah. have this oil that is injurious to the lungs so yes the, not only are they small but then it can so small it can go really far but then it doesn't just stay there it, it, it irritates the lung and can become a lot of trouble so yeah yeah so this has been very just really enlightening thank you so much for coming we've talked about quite a number of things we've talked about who a pediatric pulmonologist is we've talked about just a different lung conditions and why they might be presenting at night and we came up with seven different ones so if you're just joining us you could go back and watch <laughs> and then we've talked about also what are some reasons why you might want to go and see um, a pulmonologist if your child needs more testing or more um, treatment for whatever lung conditions or breathing issues that it may be having because when your child of course has breathing struggles then their sleep is going to be fragmented right and if their sleep is fragmented it becomes this vicious cycle because they're more tired their immune system is weaker they're more likely to get sick and so we have this vicious cycle and we want to definitely avoid that so I don't know if you have any final words or comments or you know thoughts and also just share where we can find you i know there's some incredible things coming down the pike so let us know absolutely so so like you said i'll just say the last i'll just go off from the last thing you mentioned as the fact that when asthma is poorly controlled one of the ways that we can tell right not just asthma but asthma in particular because of the diurnal variation that we said asthma in particular will give a cough at night time right almost every day and so a child who's otherwise well there's no viral illness who's coughing at night time that's a reason to talk to the pulmonologist. That's a reason to talk to a physician who may then refer to a pulmonologist because that's not normal that when you're well, you don't have a viral illness, a child or an adult goes to sleep and then they start to cough. And it may not be that. It may be that um, they, have, you know, they have some other thing that presents as choking and then they wake up. Last, and like I highlight, the fact that the brain senses that... Um, there's difficulty breathing, it will wake the person up as a protective me mechanism, which then disrupts their sleep. And Dr. Brown is all about our sleep, <laughs> right? So, so no, and it's not, and imagine in children, and you want them yeah. to school the next day and learn. So absolutely, something that anytime there's breathing problems manifesting more at night, we've talked about why, but we need to visit. We need to visit the, um, try to find out why and then fix it. Um, so yes something that's coming down the um, pipeline soon i will have a proper announcement for date and time when um we'll be opening our own pulmonary practice it'll be mostly children um, but there will be tests as well facilities for adults and there'll be uh, many things so i'm in new jersey but the wait list will be launched soon um i'm i'm glad i'll be happy to share it with everyone in the meantime you can find me here on instagram and chat um and on, on LinkedIn, you know, my full name, Falasha Dikpar. Um, I think those are the two places that I, I'm at. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm seeing a comment about how insightful this has been. Thank you so much for your comments, Ma. Um, and so thank you so much for coming. You guys, you guys heard, we're looking forward to that, where you, we're going to have this incredible resource, Dr. Fari's practice for children with um, breathing related problems. And I think that is just incredible. So definitely give her a follow so that you know when the wait list is out. And um, my wait list is open. It's the Restful Sleep Place. So really the work we do is so synchronous. It's beautiful. Uh, my focus is sleep related issues in your children and your young adults. So you name it all the way from breathing issues related to medical problems to behavioral problems and everything in between so get on the wait list it's at the restful sleep place it's going to be um opening officially in october it's a small number of patients i'm going to be seeing first so it's going to be first come first serve so get on there 
especially if you live in Pennsylvania or New Jersey. And so we really wanted to bring this to you, also shed some light on what breathing looks like in kids and how it impacts their sleep. And I hope that has added value to you all. And I hope everyone has a great night. Thank you again, Dr. Fari. So good seeing you. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone.